Uh, this is a remarkable story as I read over uh, what this movie is about, Hooligan Sparrow. Uh, Hooligan Sparrow is a woman in China named Yi Haiyan, right? Yes. And Very good at pronunciation. She feels um, part Chinese. Yes. You can't tell, but I am part Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is um, a woman who, there, there had been uh, cases of sexual abuse of schoolgirls at a school in this province in China, right? Yeah, in and, Hainan province. And they tried to cover it up. Yep. And this woman, is she the mother of one of them? Or? No, she has no relationship with the victim girls. And she doesn't know them at all. Really? Yeah, she did it just because she thought it's injustice. Mm -hmm. So and she's like a superhero or something. And <laughs> how did you find out about her? And, you, and go, how did you end up going to China to film this? It was interesting because I am a Chinese. And I only came to the United States three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was reading on the news and I read about her. Uh, before she did this protest, she's like one of the most prominent women's rights activists in China. And she has a very unique style, which is like she used her nude, like her own body to do activism. Mm -hmm. She would like post nude photos with a sign covered on well, her boobs. That's like, a no-no. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she, the thing that she did and made me want to make a film is she went to the brothels in China. And she, yeah. Uh, poor houses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the poorest of brothels. And she posted a sign on the internet saying, I'm offering sex for free. Whoever wants to have sex with me, just uh, come here. And all I need is to document the experience mm -hmm. and to expose the realities for sex workers and migrant workers. And that's how I found her. Wow. Now, now, this woman's life must be... I mean, how has she avoided jail, or how has she avoided injury, or...? She couldn't avoid. Um, when I was filming her in 2013, after the protest, the next day she was arrested. And there was a free sparrow campaign in China, so the government couldn't keep up with the pressure, and they released her after 13 days. But then they sent out secret pleas, and chased her from city to city, evicted her whenever like she found a shelter. So just made her life miserable. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you went to film, so you saw this story of this woman. Uh, you say, "I have to go back to China." Yeah. Um, were you nervous going back? No, at the time I wasn't political at all, and I never talked to an activist. I didn't know what activism was like in China, so I was naive, I went back and I said, hey, Sparrow, I want to make a film about sex workers. Can you introduce me to them? <laughs> and she was like, I'm not, at the moment, I'm not with any sex workers. I'm in the middle of the national breaking news, and I wanted to protest against the principal and the government. And she told me this, and I was like... This is the okay. story of the sex abuse of yeah. the schoolgirls. Yeah. So you start filming that. Yeah, so I, the story changed. Yeah. And, has and, been, and then as I read this, you got into, um, you got into problems. You got... Well, that's what I was going to ask is how hard was it to, to film there just to get per permission or did you get permission? There is no permission. No. no. Well, you don't need... Well, I would say you don't need, but you can, even if you have a permission, you cannot film. So... The day before we went to the protest, Sparrow told me, you cannot bring a tripod because if you have a tripod, it's very obvious you are either a journalist or a filmmaker. So I end up like just using handheld for the entire film, like outside. And two weeks after I started filming after the protest, my family, which is like 500 miles away from where the protest was, got a phone call from the national security agents. Mm -hmm. They were like, we heard that Nan Fu is back in China. Where is she? Do you know what she is doing? And I didn't tell my family what I was doing at the time. Did you I tell did them you were there in China? Oh, they knew, they but knew I you haven't. Were in China. Yeah, at the time I didn't see them and I didn't tell them. So that's when I found out how serious it was, and then it just it got worse. And then you document all of this in yeah. your film. So, the, and the name of the film is Hooligan Sparrow, and it's uh, Nan Fu Huang. Mm -hmm. How then did you have trouble getting the film out of China? Yeah, 
um, I tried to ship the hard drives uh, using different shipping services. At one time, I realized that I was followed by secret police. Oh. And I already handed the drive to the officer in the shipping service. And then I went out and I saw the secret police was there. And I was very afraid that they would take it. And then I said, I went back and I said, never mind, I'm not going to ship it. Can you give it back <laughs> to me? And then I tried FedEx because I thought it's like it's not a um, mm-hmm. Chinese shipping service. And the FedEx officer told me um, every media package, when they leave the customs, it will be inspected by the Chinese government. Mm. And we are not responsible for that. If you are aware of the risk, then you can do it. But we just cannot guarantee mm. that you will get this to mm. whatever you want to. I, I suspect that part of the film is how you eventually got the film out. Is that part of your film? Is yeah. It, so let's yeah, not, you, yeah, let's you, not you, give it all away. Oh, have okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not give it all away. Mm. Um, it's called uh, Hooligan Sparrow. This woman, um, who, the Hooligan Sparrow, she's very determined looking and she's a beautiful looking. I'm just curious uh, as to one, one thing about um, how, when you came, why did you come to the United States and, and do you plan on staying here? Um, when I first came here, I wanted to start a documentary. That's because um, I was majoring in literature in China and I wanted to write, I wanted to tell stories. But I thought in order to like tell a story that uh, many people could see or read, then it has to be like some kind of form. And then I came here to study journalism. And then I realized journalism is not gonna help like the stories that I want to tell. It has to be long form. And then I thought documentary is the perfect media. And yeah. Well, it's, uh, I, I, I hope this is a huge success. It's called Hooligan Sparrow. It's in the world documentary um, section. It's a, it's a, it's a feature-length documentary. It's 84 minutes. Yes. And um, gra- just great to meet you, and I hope great success for this. It's, you- it sounds fascinating. Yeah. It's uh, Hooligan Sparrow, ladies and gentlemen, Nan Fu Huang. Thank you. Thank you.